the Braves take game two of the National League Division Series. Two homers by Dansby Swenson and Travis Zarnot, and a great performance by Ian Anderson to lead the Braves to take this win. And let's go and do our post-game show real quick. The third team in MLB history with three shout-outs in the first postseason, the first four postseason games, this Atlanta Braves. Great job by the pitching. I mean, we've talked about the offense, but if you look at it, the Braves have only won one game in this postseason with just offense, and that was the first game of this series. The rest of them have been a lot of good pitching and timely hitting, and that's what happened today. A couple of homers, like uh, David was saying before, and it's, I mean, it hurts. The, the, yeah. Marlins, the Marlins pitching did what they were supposed to do, which was holding this team to few runs and give the bats the opportunity to be in this series. And Pablo did it. The entire bullpen did their job. Blyer when he came, Boxberger, and then Kinsler. And it's too bad because the Marlins are down 2-0 in the series now. Yeah, it, you – I mean, this is – this was literally the game that the Marlins were hoping for, right? Their, yeah. their pitchers to go out there, um, for Pablo Lopez to go out there and, and to pitch as well as he did. I mean, yeah, he gives up the two home runs, but again, they weren't bad pitches. That was just great hitting by Dansby Swanson and Travis Darno. And then Travis Darno is absolutely on fire, right? He's, he's you know, maybe the hottest uh, hitter in their lineup. But to limit this lineup to two runs, to limit them – to four hits on the game. I mean, this is a dominant offensive lineup, and the Marlins pitching staff were able to keep them to two runs on four hits. I mean, you cannot ask for anything more from this pitching staff. I mean, this Braves lineup averages 5.7 runs per game in the regular season. That was the second most in the MLB. They were so, so good. And then, you know, to turn around and to give up nine runs – yesterday and to give up two runs here today to limit the the superstars in this um in this atlanta lineup i mean they strike out acuna four times freddie freeman was 0 for 4 you know ozuna was 0 for 3 with a strikeout albies was 0 for 3 duvall was 0 for 3 i mean these are the big names that you worry about right and then but Travis Dono hits get gets a hold of one there Dansby Swanson obviously was the the go ahead home run early you know you can't you can't fault the Marlins pitching staff for this. I mean, Blyer was great, Boxberger was great, Kinsler was great coming out of the bullpen. Those guys were really really sharp and solid. It's it's on the offense today. It was on it was on the the veterans in that lineup that could not come up with the big hit. Just too many mistakes, too many opportunities squandered. Yeah, and and we'll go over those opportunities because they were there, and, and especially in three particular innings. Uh, two against Anderson and then later on against the relief pitching. So it was one one two pitch, a fastball in that uh, Swanson hit out. And that, I mean, credit to him because he got his hands through and could hit that ball very hard. And it was way, way, way out of here in Minute Maid Park. And then something similar happened with the Travis or not a bat. It was a 2 0 count, but it was a changeup inside that it would have been a ball. Uh, it could have been a ball, and he just hit it out of the park, and that, I mean, that was it. That that was the only uh, damage that the Braves had today, and the Marlins missed in the first inning. It all it all started bad because I, I know you didn't see it, but Corey Dickerson swung at a ball that was up like at his face <laughs> at a three-two count. That was the first out of the game, and that inning, uh, the Marlins left two on. Gary Cooper hit a. a a good line drive to right field, but it was right straight to Markakis. So that was the first opportunity. The second one was with bases loaded. Ian Anderson was out of the game. Darren O'Day had to come in the seventh inning, and he hit Brian Anderson. He walked Gary Cooper. We had bases loaded, two outs. Our favorite situation, right, with current, scoring position, uh, guys in scoring position and two outs, and, and Matt Joyce had – a rookie at bat, but a, not, yeah. not, a, not a Major League Baseball rookie at bat. A, a little ball rookie at bat, just swinging at the first pitch after a guy uh, hit a guy, the pitcher hit a guy, and walked another guy in five pitches. He, he grounded out to first base. Those were the, the first two, right? And the third one just killed our hearts with uh, the error starting the inning. Corey Dickerson 
gets on, Birdie somehow hits a blooper to right field. Marquez was playing way deep. I guess they were maybe they were playing no double defense. Sometimes yeah, they do this. Yeah, sometimes they do this to try to avoid, especially with a fast guy like Birdie, try to avoid him to to get to the second. And the ball drops, and like we were saying before in during the game, I know it's it was a hard call because it could have been 50-50. You go too far, Marqueque catches the ball, and maybe he doubles you off on first, and, and then you did it worse. But if you know where the outfielder is, if you see the ball and then you read the outfielder, that's all you need to make the decision even before the ball drops. And even that, when you see the replay, you see that as the ball is dropping, Corey Dickerson is going back to the base, so there was no chance. And especially with Marquez, he did a great job, like you, like yeah. you said. He grabbed the ball; it was a, a one hop. He grabbed it and threw a, a bullet to, to second base. And props to him for that throw. But if you read the ball properly, you have one uh, man on first and second with no outs. What came after that was just uh, five straight outs with no nothing to to compete by the by the Marlins and that's it. The, the Braves are up 2-0 in the series. And here's the thing, tomorrow we have uh, Sixto Sanchez, right? And Sixto Sanchez is gonna be, uh, be here against the wall. And you know, pressure's on. So, and, and you're gonna demand a top effort by, by Sixto Sanchez, a lot of pressure on him, but a lot of pressure on the offense too. Which do you think, let's go and, and talk a little bit about the offensive side because uh, only three hits today by the Marlins. Yeah. Do you think uh, Madeline is going to mix the lineup up for tomorrow? I think he has to at this point. I mean, the the Marlins are 0-2. They lose tomorrow. That's it. The season's over, right? Yeah. So I, at this point, there's nothing to lose, right? The The obvious change to make is probably Chad Wallach uh, sitting and Jorge Alfaro getting in the ballgame, right? If nothing else, you want to give Jorge Alfaro the taste of postseason baseball. Yeah, know? yeah, for sure. No, he deserves it too. Of course. Yeah, and you know, Chad Wallach has started probably like six or seven games in a row. I mean, I know yeah. there was some off. There was he needs baseball. a rest anyway. Yeah, but still, I mean, I would go with Alfaro if I were him, um, just to, to to get another potential uh, potential bat in the lineup. I mean, he hasn't been great this year, right? I mean, he hit like two. I think it was two twenty eight or two twenty six, something like that. Um, you know, he, he had a couple homers, but you know, the offense needs to do something. This was a winnable game for them. And when you look at the veterans and the veterans that made mistakes specifically in this ball game, um, it, it really, really hurts. Right. So all three guys, the, the three veterans that, that the Marlins brought in this year to help them in these situations specifically, they, they weren't the ones that came through. Right. So if you look at Matt Joyce, right, bases loaded against a pitcher who was struggling. If if you look at the two counts prior to Joyce, the two at-bats prior to Joyce, right, so he throws four pitches to Brian Anderson. Three of them were balls, including yeah. the one that hit Anderson. He throws five pitches to Garrett Cooper. Four of those five were balls, you know. So to jump on that first pitch, you know, you wonder if that was the if that was the right play there. I mean, he he probably assumed that O'Day would try to pump in a fastball to to get ahead in the count. Yeah. O'Day went with a slider and and Joyce did nothing with it, right? So yeah. that was um, you know, a, a missed opportunity for for the veterans, right? And then um there was there was another opportunity. Obviously, we talked about you you talked about the you know, the the mistake, the base running mistake by Corey Dickerson. It's a huge mistake to make. I mean, if you look at the replay, you mentioned he was leaning back. I mean, he was hopping back to first base, right? And it's a great play by Marcakis. I mean, he fielded the ball, the ball cleanly, um, you know, and, you know, it, but m completely missed opportunity, right? We should have had runners at first and second there with nobody out. And then to follow that, Jesus Aguilar has maybe the worst at bat that I've seen all season long from him. It was I'm, pretty bad, yes. He swung at two sliders that were so far out of the zone. The strikeout pitch bounced in the dirt. I mean, it was it was ugly, ugly, ugly there, particularly in the eighth inning for the Marlins. And it's just – it's a missed opportunity. So you wonder about where Mattingly goes next, right? I mean, he's limited without Starling Marte. 
I think the only change that you make is um, is Alfaro in there at uh, at catcher because Kyle Wright, who's going to start for the Braves, he's a he's a righty, and typically um, Mattingly goes with Joyce uh, with versus righties and Brinson versus lefties. I mean, so I would imagine that Joyce is probably in there tomorrow. Although maybe you go with Brinson just to mix it up. Um, hmm. Sierra, you know, he didn't do anything today, but he was he was productive in Game One. So yeah. Sierra probably should be in the lineup against against the righty. But I would think about maybe putting putting Joyce uh, on the bench and and giving Brinson a shot. You know, at this point, somebody needs to make a big play offensively for the Marlins. And I mean, the good thing is is they're facing Kyle Wright, somebody that they've had some success against. Yeah, I mean. Thinking about the future, you might as well give Harrison or Brinson the opportunity to play right now. And you know what? It, it's postseason experience. There's no fans. There's no nothing. But still, it's, it's the, the opportunity to be there. And why not just just give the guys a chance? The, the Series 2-0 is not like Joyce is killing the ball right now. And going back to that at bat, if Joyce is somebody like Freddie Freeman or, or Juan Soto or one of those guys, you know what? If you swing, that's fine. I... I, I I know you, it's very probable that you're going to get a base hit somewhere in, in, in those swings. But uh, Matt Joyce, I would expect a, a more experience at bat there. But anyway, it's, it's, it's been frustrating. The first game for the pitching, the second one for the offense, and now we'll see what they do. Uh, they don't have a lot of options either. Without Starling Marte, the, the depth yeah. of this team is not as good. Sean Rodriguez, you have him here just in case something Yeah, happens. he's – He's an emergency catcher. Like he's there. He's he's not, and he didn't do anything during the year. I mean, it was it was weird that they even had they put Rodriguez on the roster. I mean, I would have I would have considered maybe keeping Lewin Diaz, although Diaz can only play first base, and then you know you already have Cooper and Aguilar, so that's probably the move why why they put in Rodriguez instead of Lewin Diaz. But I mean, listen, the good thing is, yeah, the Marlins have played really well with their back against the wall, right? Um, Obviously, you know, with everything that happened to this team, uh, tomorrow the season's quite literally on the line. You win and you get to keep playing. You lose, the season's over. And they're going against Kyle Wright. Kyle Wright, this season, um, I mean, he was 4-4 four and four with a 521 ERA. Against the Marlins, he was 0-2. He started against the Marlins twice. He was 0-2. He gave up eight earned runs to the Marlins in seven innings pitched. So the Marlins have had success against Kyle Wright. Now, Wright was better in September. He um, his, his last few starts, I mean, he, he pitched really, really well against the Mets late in September. He went six and a third. He didn't give up an, an earned run there. He gave up two earned runs to the, to the Red Sox and went six and two-thirds innings. So he was a little bit better to, to end the year. He ended on a high note winning his last three starts. But the Marlins, they did get to him in the two times that they faced him earlier this year. So there's an opportunity there for the Marlins. I mean, I know that Kyle Wright made some changes. He, he started throwing his change up a little bit more, stuff like that. So the Marlins will have to make an adjustment in, in that regard specifically. But you, you're hoping for another dynamite start from, from Sixto Sanchez. Um, you know, and, and he actually, he, he went out and, and, and pitched against the Braves, but the, the Braves, they they got to him in his start too. Um, yeah. He against the Braves. He started twice against the Braves. He gave up his first start against the Braves was was really good. He six innings, no earned runs. But in his second start against the Braves, he gave up four earned runs in three innings pitch. So you know, hopefully, uh, Sixto can find his form again and and kind of limit this uh, this Braves lineup. And then the Marlins offense, it has to wake up. It has to wake up. There's there's no choice. Um, and they're going against a pitcher in Kyle Wright that they've had had success against in the past. So hopefully uh, it turns around for the Marlins tomorrow. Yeah, and hopefully they can get at least that uh, that win and not not be a sweep. I mean, this is going to be a rivalry for the next couple of years. So yeah. you you better get used to it because that Braves uh, team is is actually pretty young. Besides, if you take out, I mean, Freddie Freeman is a veteran guy already, but he's going to be here there for a couple of more years. Ozuna, we don't know if he's going to come back with the Braves. But the rest of the team, if, yeah, you, take out, if you take out Duval and maybe Darnot, that are experienced guys as well, the rest of the team is there. So uh, w this is just the first chapter of what could be 
a series of, of long series in the postseason, and hopefully the Marlies uh, can be up for the challenge uh, in the next couple of years. But tomorrow we do have a third game of the series, and we do have Sixto Sanchez. It's going to be uh, Sixto Day. In Sixto, we trust, so we go and try to get that third game, and we're going to be back at 2 p.m. tomorrow to do this live comments again with you guys. Thank you to all of you. Thank you to Christian, who was here for the beginning of the game, and David, who was here with me to the end and did this post-game show for you guys. Thank you. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're going to be doing more and more and creating more content for you guys here on Five Reasons Sports Network. Thank you very much, and see you tomorrow with more Mark.